Maybe you are new to resin 3D printing and you're wondering which resin is actually the best for printing miniatures? Or maybe you found that the resin you have used it's way too brittle and it can't handle you painting the miniatures and playing with them. Or maybe you're even wondering what do I get if I pay more for resin? I had the same questions as you and I decided to just test a bunch of different resins and see what you got at different price points. If you just want the cheapest of cheapest resin you can get your hands on and you want to print in bulk, I think Sunlu Standard is the best choice. You need to buy it in bulk and you need to buy it directly from Sunlu on a sale, which they have constantly, but it is brittle as all hell. When I first bought resin like this, I was convinced the quality of the print would suffer and the details would be blurred or not as sharp as other resins. But unless you're putting your prints under a microscope, it turns out all of the resins are pretty good at capturing details. What you will see a difference in from a cheap resin to a more expensive resin is brittleness, but also sort of the finish of the print. The cheaper ones, they don't have as nice a finish. How easy the details are to see out of the printer. If you paint your miniatures, that becomes largely irrelevant. This will mostly be something you are concerned about if you're taking photos directly of your prints or filming for YouTube. So if you want the cheapest, go with the cheapest. These are all standard or basic resins and they are very, very similar across all of the brands. So what are the downsides of cheap basic resins? Well, they're brittle as hell. Your miniatures will break just by minor bumps. Uh, they can't handle a fall from a table. And even when you paint them, you can sometimes break them. Me personally, I like a good deal. I really like value, but I also hate waste. While painting tons of minis for cheap is fun, I simply hate shattering something I've painted. If I am going to use my time painting something, it needs to last. And gluing a shattered resin model back together is not fun. It's often not worth the effort if it is even possible at all. Also, you will find that you can print a lot more than you can paint. So flooding your space with prints is way too easy. In my experience, it's better to spend a bit more than this to get some better properties in your resin. So let's put this aside. These are all basic or standard resins and they are almost completely similar. They are all brittle, they all have fine detail, they have very similar properties. Speaking of properties, these are the factors at play in the resin you use for printing. All of the resins we use in printing can cure when they are exposed to UV light. You don't want to buy a resin that cures when exposed to air. That's going to be a very bad experience. Some of the resins can be washed with water and other claims to be able to be washed with water. They have different odors. They all expose vox or volatile organic compounds. The strength or durability of the resin when cured is determined by a lot of things actually. The flexibility, the tensile strength, the impact resistant, and so on. Often low viscosity or runny resin will be brittle and will be able to be cured a bit faster in each layer. High viscosity resin needs a bit more cure time per layer, but it's also often more durable. The viscosity of the resin will change with temperature. So you will find that on, in higher temperatures, your resin will flow a bit faster. That's actually preferred. The ideal Exposure time for a layer will also change with the temperature and the viscosity. Stable temperatures are much preferred when printing like this. Some resins need higher temperatures, but they all want sort of high temperatures. Think at least 20 degrees and sometimes even 25 degrees Celsius. The colors of the resin can have an impact on the properties of the resin. So the same color in the same type of resin or brand might require a bit more exposure time, a bit less, and they might behave a bit differently. This is especially true for clear or see-through resin, which is really hard to work with. In general, when resin goes up in price, you get some better properties than the standard basic resins, but not always. When I'm looking at resins to recommend, I am not looking at odor and I'm not looking at VOC exposure. They all smell and smell can be very subjective, so I'm not gonna rate it on something like that. 
and all of the resin produced vox. Yes, even the eco or plant-based or low vox or no vox, they all produce volatile organic compounds. For colors, I'm a basic man, I like gray. I want something where I can see the details right out of the printer, so a lot of colors is sort of out for me. But that's very much sort of a creative thing. I need to take images, I need to take video of my prints. If you're going to prime them and paint them, it doesn't really matter. Some of the colors can be easier to get primer on, to, to coat it, but it's whatever. Broadly, you can bunch the resin into different types or groups. You got the basic resin, which is low viscosity and very brittle. Then you got the tough resin, which is kind of expensive, but also very tough, has a high viscosity. Then you have something in between, sort of a middle point where the viscosity is sort of medium and the price point is sort of medium. ABS is actually a term uh, we, we loan from FDM printing. It's a type of filament, which is extremely confusing because nobody really uses ABS that much anymore. And it has nothing to do with resin, but that's what we call it. Then we have these uh, sort of detailed scut resin. They are often brittle, but look quite good. But the difference between a basic and the sculpt or, or 8K stuff, it's extremely minor. We also have the fast resins, which are expensive, very low viscosity and extremely brittle. And I don't like them. We also have water washable resin which is sort of their own category, but not really. A water wash is often a standard or basic resin, but it does not have to be at least anymore. We got ABS like water washable resin. There is quite a big jump in price between the standard resin and just your average ABS like, often double the price. Some people that are not willing to spend that kind of cash, they often spring for a popular hack. You see, you can mix different resins with each other. A normal example is to buy cheap bulk standard resin and pour in 5 to 10% Cyrotec Tenacious. The reason to do this is that you lend some properties from the tough resin to the basic resin while saving a few bucks. And a bonus is that you can do the Breaking Bad reenactment. The plan is we cook. So the majority of your resin is cheap, but your models get quite a lot more durability for very little extra cost. You can also do a mix of tough with ABS like. And this one, this is a very common way to do it. Oh, and if you ever find yourself with a little bit of resin left over in your tank, and you have a bottle of resin, oh, you can't be bothered to take the leftover out. You just pour the new one in, mix them together. It will work fine, but your exposure time might be a bit off. But if you're a beginner in printing miniatures, I think you should look for a resin that just works out of the box. While this mixing can be fun, you need to be extra diligent when mixing your resin before printing, and sometimes you can screw up the mix, changing the ideal exposure time for the model. For me at least, mixing is not my favorite. Uh, I don't think it's ideal for beginners. What are you actually getting when upgrading from a basic resin to an ABS-like resin? For almost all of them, you get a bottle of resin where the experience out of the bottle is pretty good. A model without flimsy parts will be able to survive a fall from a table. Not tough, but you can handle them without breaking. At one point, I wouldn't recommend the Elegoo or any cubic offerings of ABS-like, but with the newer versions they're coming out with, they are fine. And Sierra Tech Fast is a very common recommendation. I like it a lot. But what it seems like is that they are all sort of moving closer and closer together in terms of properties and value. It's almost like they all get their resin produced from sort of the same few factories. And maybe the ABS-like resins are good enough for your use case. It is often what I use when I just print stuff. But I'm actually moving away from using all of the resins I've just talked about. So why is that? Well, all of the resins we have talked about so far requires you to clean your leftover liquid resin off the model with alcohol or something similar. And that process is without a doubt the biggest drawback to printing in resin. So if you are really a beginner into printing and you haven't bought the recommended strainer jars and a wash station, I think you should start off with something completely different a water washable resin. But watch out, you cannot just buy any water washable resin. 
Many of them are of the basic standard and it's not a good experience. They wash poorly in water and they are extremely brittle. So they're not really water washable, they're just bad resins. What you get if you find a good water washable resin is you get a cleaning method that is really great. If you want to go water wash resin, I think you should go with the bucket and spray method. You can learn about it in this video. And for that method, the War Gamer resin is the only thing I would recommend. It washes easily with water, it has durability that is comparable to the ABS-like resins, and the finish of the print are pretty nice. But my models see a lot of transportation, and when they arrive at the destination, sometimes kids need to handle them, or even worse, non-miniature gamers at my Dungeons and Dragons table. And I cannot mix this with the Ceriotech Tenacious, because that's not water washable, and if it did, I couldn't wash it with water anymore, and then it would just be whatever. So if I really need some miniatures to stand up for some tough love, an ABS like mixed with Tenacious is the way to go. But the price increase from basic to ABS like with Tenacious is a bit high. But that price increase ain't nothing than going from ABS like to printing directly with the tough stuff. If I'm printing something and I need to be dead certain it needs to last, then I'm treating myself to some TGM7 from Amerilabs. Some say it's magic in a bottle, and I'm actually one of those people. It prints with very good detail, like everything else, but the flexibility and toughness is just extremely great. I found it super easy to work with. You might find that removing supports is a bit more work, but when the model is out of the support, it really holds up. If you go to conventions where people print miniatures for display at booth, for a game they have made, they will often use TGM7, and that's for good reason. I really enjoy using this resin. But my wallet, it ain't enjoying that. Even when buying this in bulk, it hurts. Speaking of hurting, it can be a pain to get started with printing miniatures without some good guidance. Right now, you can get my video course teaching you everything you need to know about printing miniatures. And it's an early bird price. It comes bundled with a lot of cool ready to print miniatures and I think it's just a very good value. But maybe you're still on the fence with the whole resin printing thing. Well, maybe it's time you did something about it. And I will tell you why in this video.